Howdy y'all, and welcome back to the farm. Today, we're gonna to be working on my sister-in-law's Kia Spectre. This Kia has had a lot of overheating issues recently, and the re what we found was the radiator had actually cracked along the plastic part on top. We've got a new radiator here today, so let's pop this hood and get started. Now, before we get started, I wanna walk you through the steps we're gonna to take today. Switching out this radiator is gonna be really easy. The radiator's only held in by a couple of bolts, but it's got a lot of things connected to it. For instance, it's got an upper and lower radiator hose, it's got the overflow hose here, and then it's got a lot of wires. This, is, this motor is mounted transverse, so unlike an older motor, it doesn't actually use the drive shaft to spin the cooling fan. It's got electric fans that are attached to the back of this radiator. One of the things you wanna be careful of when you're taking a radiator off is that you're gonna have a lot of things that you'll end up taking from the old radiator and putting on the new radiator. So as you take things off, make sure you're taking them off uh, carefully, noting where they go, just in case it's one of the things you have to take from the old radiator and put on the new one. So where this radiator actually failed was here on the top. This, is, this radiator is both metal and plastic. It's got, a, it's got metal, uh, metal tubes and fins, but it's got plastic caps. So this piece, of, this piece on top is all plastic. And where it cracked was actually right here. You can see we've got some JB uh, water well that we tried to put in place, and that held for a while, but the issue was this plastic cap didn't ha wasn't abrasive enough to hold that JB weld in place. So we tried things like sanding, we tried things like routing it out, but we couldn't get a high pressure seal to happen with the water well. It's one of the things about these radiators is as they heat up, they actually keep that pressure in and they're pressurized. So whatever you use to fix this plastic up here has to hold up to the pressure that the radiator is going to be holding. Let's go ahead and get this radiator draining down so that we can uh, start taking it apart. The first step is draining down this radiator. Now this radiator has a radiator plug on the driver's side of the car. So it takes a Phillip head screwdriver. We're just gonna put our screwdriver up in there and try to get this thing moving. Oh, there we go, it's moving. And we're going to put our pan directly under it and see how much of this we can catch. Now you're not going to catch all of it, give yourself a little grace here, but draining it from the bottom of the radiator is going to make this a lot easier. All right, there we go. There's the plug, put that on our parts table, and then open up the cap and get this thing draining down. There we go. Once that's drained down, we'll start taking stuff apart. <laughs> it hit the underside valence and decided to go everywhere. So we're working like a diverter. So now that we got that radiator drained down, it's time to start taking the radiator out of the car. Now to do that, we're gonna need to take off a few bolts and a few hoses. We'll start with these support, support bolts right here. They attach to the radiator mounts and then we'll start removing these hoses. There's gonna be three hoses, I think, on this radiator. There's a top hose, a bottom radiator hose, and then there's a hose that diverts coolant to the AC condenser. So I'm gonna start taking off hoses, uh, taking off hoses, taking off bolts, taking off this overflow hose, and then I'm also going to be looking for a, uh, there's gonna be quite a few electrical connections here on the radiator that, that power the fans. So we're gonna be taking those off as well. So because I've never taken this radiator out before, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out slowly. This is good advice for any time you're taking a large component out of your car that has a lot of different connections. What we'll do is we'll start with things that are obvious, like the upper and lower radiator hose, like all the electrical connections, like these, like these mounts. Um, we'll start taking those off and then we'll give it a wiggle, try to pull it out. If we find that we're stuck up on something else, we'll carefully remove that too, before we're just yanking the thing out. Cause we don't wanna mess up any connections that we're gonna need to put on the new radiator. All right, let's get this started. So like I said, we're gonna start with the obvious things first. We'll take a pair of pliers, use them to depress our hose clamp here. Wiggle that free, wiggle that down a little bit. It's a pretty tight clamp. Once we got that hose clamp off, we'll just give this hose a little wiggle, oh, pull it all the way off. Here's the uh, coolant overflow hose. It has a little retainer right here. We'll see if we can't give this a little wiggle to get it off. Cool. Next, let's trace this bottom radiator hose down. So way at the bottom of the radiator, there's a similar clamp that we're gonna have to take off. I'm gonna reach down for that one now. All right, for these upper mount bolts, they're a 12. 
We'll just put those right there in the tray. You can see that's got the radiator loose right there. All right, then we got a few electric connectors we got to take out. All right, so you just got pinched down on this button in the back. This one on the driver's side, stiff. All right, pinch it down and pull it out. All right, that's our electric connector. All right, once we got the two electric connections off, we got the front one and the driver's side, the passenger side off. We're gonna take off this little valence right here. Covers the uh, battery hold down. Pull those out, dump them in that tray. Great. So that's out of the way. Let's see what else we're hung up on. All right, so we had a slight change of plans. We decided to remove the E-fans uh, first because there's a lot of stuff in the way. So what we did is we took out these three 10 millimeter bolts here, and then the E-fans just pop right out. Now this one has a couple of zip ties on it. We're gonna get those removed first. So I got my cutters here. Reach down in there, cut that zip tie. And we'll put new zip ties on there to keep those air AC lines uh, in the factory location. There we go. Put those out of the way. Go ahead and pull that out, and boom. There's the driver's side e fan. Now we have so much more access to the bottom of the radiator. All right, we're gonna start by taking off these brackets for the AC lines. So just another, another 10 millimeter bolt. And then there's another one down here. And they go all the way through the radiator into these brackets that the AC lines are attached to. There we go. So now the AC is loose. And we are loose on that side. So now we just need to get these last few lines undone. It looks like we've got an intercooler line coming in, the condenser line, and the bottom radiator hose. And the bottom radiator hose and the low pressure side of the condenser are uh, our fan are, are the clamps again. Let me just get our pliers on and pull back, but we're gonna need to put a wrench on the flare nut for the other side. So there's that hose, and then the big one down here is the little radiator hose. It's just this exact same as the top. So you just get this thing clamped down and then wiggle the clamp off. And once you wiggle the clamp off, you, wiggle it, you should give that hose a little twist. And once you twist it a little bit, it tends to break loose. There we go. All right, that one's off. And like I said, there's a there's a flare nut down here we just gotta bring off real quick. Okay, we got the nut off. So now with all the hoses and wires out of the way, we can pull this thing out. Oh, nope. Nope, right there. There's two more, there's two more nuts on here. I mean, two more bolts on here. There's one at the very bottom in the same place that it was on the passenger side. And then there's another one right here. And remember, those are 10 millimeter bolts. And this one does not have a lot of room. So uh, unless you've got a really tiny socket or maybe a ratcheting wrench, you're, you're just gonna have to spin it. Is that loose enough? Nope. We'll probably put that one in first next time. It's got a lot of tension on it. Sweet. All right, finally got that sucker out and boom. There is the radiator. And it's got clearance to a couple of things. There it is. Got the whole thing out of there. All right, let's go take a look at the new radiator and compare the two. Now here's a good look at the old radiator completely removed from the car. Here's the crack where we tried to JB wet water well, the plastic, but Obviously, that wasn't working out, and we lost enough coolant that it would overheat on a regular basis. Um, what we have here is the new radiator that we sourced from Rock Auto. What you can see is it actually comes with a lot of the pieces. Uh, I've actually got, this is the um, intercooler, intercooler uh, inline right here. We just have to attach that here so that we've got a, um, a beaded uh, rod to put that hose on the bottom. But the new radiator actually came with a, uh, the bottom, the other the other intercooler line here. Uh, we just have to get this installed here so that we've got a place to put that hose. And we need to get these mounts off of this radiator and onto this. Now, luckily these mounts come off pretty easy. You just pull them off like that, place them on the studs on top, and there you go. That's everything that we need from the old radiator to put on the new radiator. 
Now, your radiator might be different. From time to time, depending on the make and model of your car, you might be pulling out a lot more accessories that go on the radiator that you need to move from the old radiator to the new radiator. We took off the E-fans in the car so that we could get to all the bottom hoses, but your E-fans may come out on the radiator. And if they do, you just need to move those old E-fans onto the new radiator before sliding it back in. This radiator looks great. Uh, let's go ahead and start putting the new radiator in. It's the same process in reverse, but we'll uh, bring you along for that so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bottom hose on real quick. This goes right there. And I bet you it's a 17 millimeter, just like the other side. Perfect. All right, let's do it in. For the install, we're just gonna do exactly the opposite. First thing we're gonna do is take these two lines from our intercooler and go ahead and install them. We've got so much slack here, we'll slide on these intercooler lines prior to dropping this thing in. You got the one that went past the fans on one side, the other one's over here. Then we'll get our pliers, grab that clamp, and just cinch this down. I'm actually gonna ro rotate this to the side. You really wanna be careful when installing the radiator, not to get too close and bend any of these fins. These fins on the radiator are quite delicate, and if you bend them, uh, your radiator won't work right, or it won't work as well as it could. Well, son of a biscuit. All right, that's one. The other one, got the hose on. Oops, see, you can reach. Those things are just so delicate. You just gotta be really careful with them. There's the other one. Okay, you can pull up the bottom radiator hose too. You can see all this stuff you couldn't see last time because before I did all this at the bottom of the engine bay. Now I'm doing it at the top. So you can see this is exactly the same thing as I did earlier where you couldn't see it because it's at the bottom. Just in reverse. Cool. All right. So there we go. We're on top. And now we will just drop this guy in. Watch out for all those tabs and whatnot. Watch out for the AC lines on one side. Yeah, uh, now you just want to start lining things up. So there's two studs on the bottom. They got to line up. All right, so now that we're in our two studs on the bottom, I'm going to start reattaching our uh, AC, uh, AC condenser on the back. Turns out you do need to go back and get this square nut from the uh, old radiator to hold on the 10 millimeter bolt that holds on this corner. All right, got that bolt started, we'll tighten it on. All right. All right, so we got that one in. Reach down to the bottom, get the other corner. Wiggle this whole thing around. So I need to tell you, this is, the, this is probably the hardest part of the job. Lining up all of the bolt holes on the stock uh, AC condenser and getting it to bolt on the back of the radiator while still in the vehicle is very difficult. And it took a lot of time to get it right. My advice is this, don't tighten up any bolt all the way until you've got every bolt started because it's gonna need a wiggle a little bit to get everything in place and lined up with the bolt holes on the factory condenser. Now, luckily the nuts, clip nuts that clip onto the hole, it's been drilled into the tab. So you don't have to hold a nut on the back of this bolt, but you do have to wiggle everything into place to get that fit. All right, with that, we got everything attached to the bottom and the back of the radiator. And now we just gotta get the fans and then the top of the fans, the electrical and the top of the radiator in place. So we're gonna start with the driver's side fan. Now, if you remember from earlier, all that's required to get this fan in there is to drop it in and then these feet match up with holes in the bottom, they just slide right into. So get it down in there, past all of our tubes. Let's give it a little wiggle, so you can't get it pop in place. There we go, great. So it just drops in place like that. And then once you have the passenger, the driver's side in place, you can start reattaching these clips. So there's the big, the main clip here. You just wanna push that in so you hear a nice click. 
and then this one here. Nice click. So we got those two electrical on that side. Let's take the passenger side. Passenger side's the same way. Take those feet, feed them down right next to the driver's side fan. We'll shake into place. All right, so now that we've got all of our holes lined up, we can grab our 10 millimeter short bolts and feed those into the plastic radiator like so. I'm just gonna get them all started and then I'll wrench them down with my socket. So now we got all those holes lined up, we're gonna take these square nuts that came with our radiator and drop those in right behind those tabs. These are gonna fit in the little square cutout down there that's gonna hold the nuts in place and give our bolts something to hook into. All right, so now that we've got those nuts in place, we can start our bolts. You can see those square nuts are held in place by those tabs at the bottom of the radiator. And then one on this side. Oops. You know, you gotta drop something. All right, give those a push together. So the holes line up, and then there you go. We are in there. Three. One. Two. And three. And we'll go ahead and wrench these down. I got hold. So they're not backing out. It's all plastic in here, so you don't want to put any kind of torque wrench on it or anything. Or any, uh... You just want to get that hand tight so you're not breaking stuff. With that in place, we can take our coolant overflow reservoir and attach it in here. Don't forget your passenger side E-fan connection down there. And the last thing to do is going to be taking our mounts getting them on Taking our mounts, getting them on those studs. Be real careful, because once again, all this is plastic, so you don't really want to be too rough with it, but it moves enough. Once we got that in there, we can take our 12 millimeter bolts and get those on there nice and tight. Get our top radiator hose fitted on all the way to the bottom. Grab that hose clamp. We'll fit it right back into place. All right, great. Oh, and let's go ahead, let's not forget this battery cover valence that we took off. These little clips, they just go down through the hole and they tighten down with the Phillips head screwdriver um, to expand those little claw feet on them and hold that plastic piece together. Now the only thing left to do is to fill up the radiator and burp the system. Oh, you know what? Let's get a couple zip ties real quick. So this hose right here was just zip tied to the uh, to the uh, fan shroud. So we're just gonna zip tie that hose in place just like it was when we took it off. And then we'll clip off those extra ends so they're not getting caught in anything. All right. Now we can start burping the system. Um, to burp the system, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the radiator to the top, and then we're gonna start the car. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to add fluid as the air bubbles work their way out of the engine. This can take a little while, but what you wanna do is just watch it and fill it up as we go, and uh, then your radiator will be all the way full and you won't have air bubbles in your system. When you're doing this, you also wanna make sure your heat is on high so that your heater core is also filling up with coolant. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and filled up the radiator all the way to the top here. When I turn the key and start it, there's air inside the engine and inside these pipes, especially these tubes that are up at the top. You can see when I squeeze it, it actually wants to force some of that air out. When I start the car, some bubbles will come out and then what we'll do is we'll continue to top it off as more bubbles work their way to the surface. And with that, this job is done. Like I said before, the hardest part of this job really is getting that condenser back on the back. But depending on your make and model, yours might be a lot less complicated than that. A lot of units will come out all together and then you just take off those pieces 
and put them onto the radiator outside the car. This car is just so small that I'm, sh the, I'm sure the condenser just doesn't have its own brackets and they had, to br they had to brace it against the radiator to keep it in the front of the engine. Everything else was a piece of cake. It's, I mean, very few nuts and bolts. It's just a bunch of tubes and wires that you gotta be able to take off. But once you take them off, they're super easy to put back on. And this is a job that I could recommend anyone doing with a limited number of tools. I think if you saw, I use all hand tools today, just some wrenches and some sockets. One more thing about this radiator. This radiator was, the radiators are not expensive. This radiator was $45. That's, that's, that's cheap. Some of these parts in the car are multiple hundreds of dollars, but for 50 bucks, you can swap out this radiator. That's a pretty good deal. Well, now this is done, I can go park it, give it back to my sister-in-law, and she can drive without worrying about her car overheating all the time because she's using, losing coolant. If you found this video helpful, I really hope that you'll give it a like. And if you like videos like this, give us a subscribe. We just got over 150 subscribers and I'm really excited about that. So if you can give me a subscribe, a like, or a comment, it gives me a lot of feedback about what I'm doing and if it's helpful or not. I love hearing from you guys, watching the videos, learning a thing or two about cars and doing these fixes on your own. I love hearing from all y'all. If you're doing some of these fixes at home and they work out for you, it just, it makes my day to hear that the video was helpful to somebody. So please, Keep that coming, you know, I love that y'all are watching the videos and I love that y'all are getting in your shops, getting this stuff done yourself, especially in the times we're in right now. It just makes so much sense for us to try to do more of this for ourselves, especially easy stuff like this radiator. All right, well thanks again for coming on this fix. We'll see y'all next time. Bye now.